bad leads. Whoop, whoop. All right, let's do this. Uh, this is 1.2 angle bisectors. Go ahead, take a minute, pause this, attempt this warm up, and we'll get right back to it. Okay, I'm assuming you paused it. Let's go. Given endpoints A and B, find point C on A B that lines on the perpendicular that lies on the perpendicular bisector. Well, here's the deal. If I have two points A and B, a bisector cuts a line in half. So that point right there is called the what? The midpoint. And we have a thing called the midpoint formula, which is to find the midpoint, you just take your two points x1 plus x2 and divide average them, divide them by 2 and that'll get you your x value and then take your two y points, add them and divide by 2 to average them and you'll get your y point. So let's try that. I'm going to have 5 uh, plus negative 1 divided by 2 for x and 1 right, right here, 1 plus 3 divided by 2 for y. Now plus minus is a minus, 5 minus 1 is 4 4 divided by 2 is 2. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is also 2. Okay, let's repeat this process. So I'm going to have 0, right? Plus 0 over 2, which is 0, spoiler alert, and 8 plus 4 over 2. That's just 0. That's going to be 12. 0 divided by 2 is 0. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Boom. All right, five plus negative three, right? Because I got that x's. And then negative five plus one. So that's over two. Negative five plus one over two. Okay, that's gonna be a minus, right? Five minus three is two over two. Two over two is one. And negative five plus one is negative four. Negative four divided by two is negative two. Boom, works for negatives as well. Then our last one is just going to be negative 6 plus negative 1 all over 2 and 6 plus 1 over 2. So what is this going to be? That's going to be negative 7. That's positive 7. So this is either 7 halves, excuse me, negative 7 halves, 7 halves, or negative 3.5, 3.5. All right, there we go. Pause it, look at it, check it out. Boom, let's move on with this. We have some vocab today, it's in center. Your in center, oh, I already had that for you, is the point of concurrency of the angles, angle bisectors of a triangle. Remember, a point of concurrency is where the lines, oh, I gotta draw, 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 there we go, intersect. That's the point of concurrency right here, where they intersect, okay? Pause this, write it down, because we're going right into our lesson, which you have some theorems to write down. So we're going, going, gone. Again, I, I don't stay long on things, guys. I expect you to pause and write them down. I don't need to wait for that time, as this is a video. Just saying. Okay. So we're looking at the first one, which is theorem 6.4, the angle bisector theorem. Which is actually pretty awesome. I'm going to make this big. Move me around. There we go. Uh, says, if a point on the bisector of an angle, or if a point is on the bisector of an angle. So this line, BF, bisects the angle, right? And if there's a point on there, then it is equidistance from the sides of the angle. And this one says, if BF bisects angle DBE, then an FD is perpendicular to BD and FE is perpendicular to BE, then DF equals EF or FE, doesn't matter how you say it. So basically these two lines right here and here are the same. Go ahead and pause this, write it down, let's go to the next one. Uh, this is the converse of that where it's saying if we know they're perpendicular first and that they're the same length, then it must be that BF bisects the angle. So go ahead and write that down. These are just the same one backwards. Again, pause this. We're going, going, and gone. I'll just turn back to my previously prepared notes. Oh, 
of folded along the line so you can't see. All that nice colored coding is going to be online, right? Boom, boom, here we go. Okay, again. Oh, what's going on there? It's getting a little auto. Where's my auto focus lock? Lock it. Lock it in. Lock in the freshness. Maybe I forgot to hit it. Okay, this is just saying right here, all right, we're already told this is an angle bisector because these angles are marked as the same. We're told these are perpendicular, and if that's so, by theorem 6.4, we know that these two sides are equal to each other, so let's do it. 5x plus 2 equals 7x minus 8. It's that simple. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides, and then add 8. And bouge 10 equals 2x or 5 equals x. But it wants fg, it wants us to find this side right here. So to find that, let's plug it in. So fg equals 7 times 5 minus 8, which is 35 minus 8 is what, 27? Yeah. That's our answer. And this one's even easier, guys. It's saying if these sides are the same length and the perpendicular, this must be an angular bisector. So this angle is congruent to this angle, which means the measure of angle PQR is equal to the measure of angle uh, RQS. That's this angle right here. Therefore, it equals 34 degrees. Normally, I wouldn't write that step right there, but I just want you to see it for your notes. Oh, let's move on. We have something else to write in here. Another in-center theorem. The last one we did was a circumcenter. We're going to do the in-center. Okay. The in-center theorem basically says this. Each of these are an angle bisector. They cut those angles in half. What does that mean? They meet at a point of concurrency. And if I were to draw a line from that point of concurrency from like P to D and it was perpendicular, then PD, PE, and PF are all equal in measure. Isn't that awesome? So pause this, write it down, because I'm going right back so we can work out that last problem. Yes, sir. There we go. Oh, fold it on this one. I guess you don't have to pause this quickly, but there we go. Okay, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where's all my controls? There we go. Perfect. Okay, so there we go. That's written down. Let's look at this right here. So here's what I know, guys. So I guess we really don't need to see that there right there. Okay. What do all the angles of a triangle add up to? Can we agree that if all the angles add to 180 in a triangle, what would half the angles add to? If the whole angles add to, so angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 all add to 180, what do half the angles add to? Half. Add to 90 degrees. So let's look at this. I know this half angle right here is 30 degrees. This half angle here is 42 degrees. And it wants me to find the measure of angle GAF, which is just, uh, where's GAF? Let's see, GAF. It's just this part right here is going to be equal to 30 plus 42 and then subtract that from 90. So this is going to equal... 90 minus 30 plus 42 degrees, which that's what, 72? So 90 minus that equals 18 degrees. Boom. That's the measure of angle GAF, 18 degrees right there. Now it wants us to find EG. EG is a little bit more complicated, okay? So to find EG, we can write that wherever we want to. Here's what I'm going to tell you. EG is equal to GF right here, which is also equal to DG, okay? 
let's look at this triangle right here. So I know that EG equals GF. Those are the same measure. So I'm going to redraw this triangle right here. In fact, I'm going to highlight it. Let's get a highlight it. I like to highlight things. I'm just going to work on this triangle, okay? So if I draw this triangle, boom. I know that it's 7.49, 7.12. Here's my right triangle. That's my hypotenuse. That's my C. We'll go ahead and call this A and this B. And here's what I know, guys. If, don't forget this. This is something you want to keep in your repertoire. If A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And I want to solve for A. I want to subtract that B squared over. And I get that a squared equals c squared minus b squared. Square root undoes a square. And I'm left with a equals the square root of c squared minus b squared. So let's plug in numbers. My a equals the square root of 7.49 squared minus 7.12 squared. Boom. We're going to calculate that on a calculator. And I'm going to round it to the hundredths because these are all to the hundredths. So this is approximately 2.33. So I know that this A side, which if we label it, G, F, I meant to do that earlier, A. I just copied this triangle down right here, right? Then my G, F is approximately 2.3. And what did we say up here? E, G equals G, F, right? So my EG is equal to my GF or my FG, whatever you want to name it, okay? So then I know that my EG is approximately 2.33. Boom. That's a good problem. I like it. With that said, you ready? Go get on your homework. Get her done. Peace out.